There are four Gospels that give foretellings of the life and the work of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We call the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the Synoptic Gospels. And the Gospel of John stands different in its own category almost among the Gospels. John's Gospel records things that are not found in the other three and stands very much different um, in some of the recordings that it has. Not, not a bad different, it just records things and portrays Christ um, in, in, in an incredible way. Let me say this, John's Gospel, more so than probably any of the other three, is able to take both Jesus' humanity and His divinity and slap them so closely together that we're left in awe. We see Jesus as a human, and then John has this incredible way to capture moments of Jesus revealing and showing His divinity. And one of those is here in the Gospel of John, verse 27 of chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 27. This takes place towards the last moments of Jesus' uh, life. This is uh, the beginning kind of of Passion Week for Him. And it says in verse 27, John, the beloved disciple, records Jesus saying these words, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. And the crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. And others said, an angel has spoken to him. But Jesus answered, this voice came for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. And he said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, we have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? And Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become the children of of light. I want to go back to those first words in our text. Jesus says, Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this hour I have come. This is the purpose of why I have come. Isn't that an incredible comment, a statement that Jesus makes? Now is my soul troubled. I love it that in John's recording of this, we know uh, in this room that Jesus is God, 100% God. He never stopped being 100% God when He came to the earth and put on that, uh, that, fillet, that coat of flesh and became a man. He was 100% God and 100% man at the same time. And yet here in this moment, John records something. He hears something and the Spirit brings it back to his remembrance. And under inspiration of that same Holy Spirit, he pins this phrase. He pins the recording of Jesus saying, now is my soul troubled. It's incredible for me to think that God was ever troubled. Now, probably not troubled in the way that we are often troubled. He was never afraid. He, he was never unaware of what was going to happen. He didn't, it wasn't as though he was ever shaken by the circumstances of unknown things. No, not at all. Remember, he is God. He always knew. He always knew what was going to happen and always knew every possible outcome of every possible scenario that ever could have happened. There is nothing that God knows that does not know that he could possibly know. He is all-knowing, omniscient. And Jesus, being God, possesses that same characteristic. He is omniscient and knows all things. So then why would Jesus be troubled? If he knew this day was coming, if he knew this moment was going to arrive, if he knew that his disciples were going to flee, and if he knew that Judas was going to betray him, if he knew they were going to whip him, if, they knew, if he knew they were going to beat him, why would he now be troubled? I would say this. His trouble, I don't believe, had much to do with the whipping. 
I don't believe the trouble probably had much to do with the means of execution, the crucifixion. I believe that there was not one whip that would have caused Jesus to be troubled. I don't believe it was the crown of thorns, the plucking out the beard, the public mockery, or the nails. If I may, I believe what troubled Jesus was that in just a few moments, what the Apostle Paul recorded in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 was this, He became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. You see, in just a few moments after Jesus says this, He's going to become sin for us. He knew no sin. Now, I understand holiness as a concept. I don't know it perfectly in my life. My life has sin in it. My mind has sin. My heart has sin. I think sinful things. I do sinful things. I can't imagine what it would be like to be absolutely, totally separated from sin. Never having committed sin. Never having a sinful thought. I can't imagine what it would be like to always do everything I'm supposed to and never do anything I'm not supposed to. I can't imagine that. And, and I would imagine that you can't either because our minds are so tainted by the stain of sin. We can't really fathom what it is to be holy. The only way we can understand what holy is is that it's not like us. That's it. I'm a sinner. Jesus is not. He is not like me in that regard. He is perfect. If there was a, if, if, if there was a, a stain of sin, he would be the ultimate stainless one. And I would, I would say, suggest today that this troubling that Jesus had when he says, now is my soul troubled, it was not because of the abuse or the neglect or the mockery. It was not because of anything relationally or, or spiritually in that sense. No, it was not that, I believe. It was because in just a few moments, he's going to become sin for us. Why would he become sin for us? Because that was the only way we could be considered righteous by God. That was the price it took to pay us. That was the price it took to purchase our salvation. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I have come to this hour. Why did Jesus come? What was the purpose of his coming? Was it to be beaten? No, no. Was it to give us an example of humility? No, not, not that in itself. Did He just come to give us some good teachings? No, He came to die. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to give His life a ransom for many. The purpose, the reason He came was to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. That there would be this great transaction. His life for ours. One can only imagine what that must have felt like. For a holy God in Jesus to have never sinned, to have all of your sin and all of my sin laid on Him. The weight of that must have been immense. No wonder just a few moments after this we would find Him in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yet a stone threw away from the other disciples on his face, praying to the Father in such incredible stress and agony, sweating drops of blood. Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Did you notice Jesus said, What shall I say, Father, save me from this hour? Did you realize that Jesus was to say, if I was going to be saved from this hour, it would be the Father that would do it? Jesus is saying, I'm not even going to save myself. As Ed displayed in that, that performance, 
When Jesus comes before Pilate, Pilate is, is asking him questions and Jesus won't answer. And Pilate says in John chapter 19, verse 11, Do you not know that I have the power to condemn you or the power to set you free? Jesus said you could have no power over me except it were given you from above. What Jesus was saying is this isn't me. This isn't my, this is, this is all the Father and I'm falling in His will and I'm, I'm, I'm seeking Him. I'm staying under submission to Him as, as Father God. And He says, my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? I'm not even going to save myself. Many of you know that old song. He could have called 10,000 angels. But here, He submits Himself entirely. Father, glorify Your name. The good news is this. Jesus shows His divinity. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. Jesus knew that even though that what stood before Him troubled Him, becoming sin for us, He knew that this was going to strike a fatal blow in the ruler of this world. That this would be the beginning of the end for the enemy. And when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. Jesus is saying here, I'm going to be crucified. That's what he says. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. To be lifted up on a cross, much like we have here, to show I'm lifted up off of the earth. And he says, if I be lifted up from the earth, if I die in that way, I'm going to draw all men to myself. What an incredible thought. That this cross, which wasn't even spoken about in polite company, this thing was so gruesome and so horrific that nobody would even, most people would not even want to look at it. People wouldn't even take their children around it because of the gruesome sight of the cross, of the blood and the broken bones and the moaning and, and all the squirming that was taking place as men were actively dying and suffocating publicly in front of everybody. This was something that wasn't even spoken about in polite company. And Jesus says... If I be lifted up from the earth, if I die in this way, what's going to happen? I will draw all people to myself. Those two pieces of wood crossed, one vertical and one horizontal, stained with blood, reeking of, of stench. Jesus said that that cross is going to draw all men to me. This purpose. Friends, if you would have asked people before the cross what the cross represented, it would have represented really only one thing, death. But for us, this side of the cross, it represents hope. It represents love. It represents sacrifice. It represents a God that never gives up on us. It represents the price and the purchase of our soul. Yes, if I be lifted up, will draw all men to myself. Jesus said, while you have the light, believe in the light that you may become the sons of light. Friends, today we stand here at this place. Unlike people in other parts of the world, that barely have a Bible, if a Bible at all. We have the Word of God. We've got this place where we come together to worship. We've got a lot of light to live up to. What are we doing with the light that we have? I pray today. I pray tonight. And just a moment as we have this response time, this very special moment, I pray that we may remember those words of Jesus, now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. Ah, but for this hour, I've come. Hey, thanks so much for listening to our podcast at First Baptist Joplin. If you are interested in coming and worshiping with us live, we would love for you to come at 9 and 1030 on Sunday mornings.